Fellas are behind cutting timber. Give me the damn. I'll talk to you later. Hey, Cookie. Get rid of this. Hey, Eric. Hello, Barney. Which one? Going up to Camp 3. Back today, maybe. What is he doing up there? Camp 3 is cutting on schedule. It's you fellas that are behind. You know that. As soon as he comes back, tell him I want to see him. Yeah. Hey, more tea, son. Coming up, coming up. Mr. Why, you to... awkward little oh. flunky. I'll Gee, teach Mr. you please. to burn me. I didn't mean it, honestly. Wait a minute, wait a minute. He couldn't help it. Let go of me or I'll give you a dose of it yourself. Now, don't get excited. It was only an accident. Now, sit down, sit down. Hey, who do you think you are? Come on, Max. Now, listen, boys. Don't start anything you can't finish. You may be sorry. What you doing around here, huh? Yeah, they teach you not to have monkey business at Barney Glasgow. He's a tough fella. Pretty soon you'll be tough enough to have camp of your own. Oh, one camp wouldn't be enough. Oh, yeah? You want to be my boss, huh? <laughs> you better watch out. <laughs> Maybe I am already. What's this? What's this? Bay George. Yup in Yemeni. Hey, fellas! Hey, fellas! What you think? Paul Hewitt make Barney big boss a whole line! <laughs> Hey, 
Get off of me, you crazy sweep. <laughs> Why, yours we celebrate, huh? Everybody get drunk. <laughs> you bet we will. <laughs> now, wait a minute, wait a minute. We'll get drunk, all right, but not until we get all the logs down to the mills. Oh. <laughs> I know, I know. All right, now you fellas settle down. I'm going to make a little speech. You've fallen way behind and you're cut. Now, you're not only going to catch up, but you're going to cut sections 9 and 10 in the bargain. <laughs> Those are orders. Now, we're going to send every log down to the mills on time. Now, do you fellas want all the free liquor you can drink? <laughs> all right. Then every one of you men have got to do a two-man job of chopping from now on. <laughs> She come up six inches. Come on, me to go up too. That's the south wind. Looks like the breakup. Yeah, we start drive tomorrow, huh? Sure. And if my figures are right, we got 28 million and some odd thousand feet cut, decked, and ready to go. And we won't leave 10 cents worth of timber behind when we move out. Well, George Fanny, I ain't see how you make the boys do it. Old you should raise your pace some more. Mm, he'll do better than that. Yeah? A partnership. I'm on my way up, Swan. I got a good start and nothing is going to stop me. Nothing. In 10 years, I'm going to be one of the richest men in this state. Ah, uh, fine. You wait and see. Hewitt likes me, and there's no limit to where I'm going. They say his daughter like you, too. Oh, do they? Well, she's a fine girl. You marry her? Maybe? There's no maybe about it. Wait a minute, you crazy Swede. Don't you jump on me or I'll kick you right in the teeth. <laughs> By George, is that the only way you stop me? <laughs> but, Barney, why ain't you tell me? She pretty? Well, she's got a good head on her shoulders. I'll say that for her. She's, uh... Listen. You hear that? Yeah. It's the ice breaking up. We have plenty of water in flumes tomorrow. You bet we will. You start on the lower pond, and if the decks are still frozen, use dynamite to break them out.
someone else. Hey, Hello, Mr. Hewitt. Hello, Blarney. Hello, Mr. Hewitt. Hello, Swan. You hear that saw? Sounds good, doesn't it? <laughs> all your logs, every stick, and 11 days ahead of schedule. Well, you ought to make it quicker than that with all the high water you've had. Oh, Mr. Hewitt, nobody ever makes such big drive. And in such time, not even you. Well, who said I did? <laughs> it's all right. Good work, Barney. You got a bonus coming, too. Yeah, well, I burned it. <laughs> I say, Mr. Hewitt, I got an idea. Oh, you have? Yeah. Did you read where the Congress may pass a law giving the railroads every other section of land along any new right-of-way they build? Yeah, but well, what's that got to do with me? I'm not in the railroad business. I know that, but what's to prevent us from shoe flying a hundred miles of rail through that government timber up north and grabbing all the pine we'll ever need at a thousand dollars a mile? What good will it do me if I only get every other section? How about putting lumberjacks on all the sections you don't own, pay them $25 a month and board, and homestead it? And after they prove it up? Have them deeded back to me. Uh-uh. No? Back to us. Mm, you got a nerve. Uh, it'll be the biggest deal ever pulled in this state. What do you say? D that ain't honest. That's stealing. Oh, as far as that goes, it's legal. All within the law. Now, Barney, that's stealing. Oh, Swan, who wouldn't pick up a million dollars laying right at their feet yelling, come and get it? Hey, no, but... What do you say, Mr. Ewart? Shall we tackle it? We. Us. Yeah. So, you want to be a partner, huh? Mm, could you find a better one? Who well, knows I could, Barney. But I have to think of Emma Louise. Is that your daughter? Yeah. See, the business will naturally go to her someday. That is, to her and her husband, of course. You haven't been around to see us much lately. Uh, well, you see, I've been jumping all over the state. But I had intended getting back to Butamore sometime this week. Good, we'll expect you. Have a cigar. Oh, thanks. Uh, I gotta run along. The I promised the boys a little jamboree, and they're getting cleaned up for it now. I'll see you sometime next week, eh, Mr. Fine. Bye-bye, Barney. Oh, thanks, Mr. Yates. Oh, hey, hello, Swan. Hello, Sid. Hello, Barney. Welcome to Iron Ridge, Barney. I'm glad to see you back. And you two gentlemen. Come on in, boys. Will you take a little drink, boys? Come in, see. Oh, you're fine. Yes, fine. You get the fat in your face. Well, boys, what do you want? Now, no, wait a minute, Barney. Wait a minute. First drink is on the house, gentlemen. That's fine. The next one is on me. And the next on me. Not on your life. Me, I said. Don't let my boys pay for a thing. And this is gone. Let me know. I'm going to buy a lot of things, Barney. Here you are, Charlie. Give me a listen to the beer chasing. Me? Yeah, quiet, everybody. Quiet. Why are you doing over there? Three drinks for all the jacks. Barney Glass goes by it. It's the old army game. Where is the little pig? It's right here. I'm sorry, my friend, but the house wins and the gambler loses. Hello, Earl. Well, hello there, Barney. You feel lucky this trip? Sure. I'll bet five dollars. No, you know, friends, the object of this little game is to find the shell under which the little pig is hidden. Now, if you'll follow me closely, you may solve one of the scientific problems of the age, the problem of whether the eye is quick in the hand or vice versa, whether the hand is quick in the eye. Under that one. <laughs> and the gentleman wins. Now remember, my friends, that a dozen of you can bet on this game just as well as one. And remember this also, that the sky is the limit. You mean I can bet as much as I like? Just as much as you like. Why, you're crazy in the head. That's the way you lose last trip. I'll bet uh, $500. $500? But Barney, $500 is too much. What did you lose? Oh, don't worry. I know what I'm doing. There you are. Come on, boy, give me a little elbow room. I can't play. Hello. Hello. Are you going to bring me luck? I do. It'll be the first time. <laughs> Swan, make room for the lady. Five hundred's right. Are you ready, Barney? Uh, no, no, no. Uh, where's your 500? Oh, well, that's all right. I guess the house is good for it. Sure, but why don't you put it up? Well, now, listen, all I... All right, can... all right. I'll put it up for him. So you're not lucky, eh? You think I'd be here if I was? There you are, Mr. Glasgow. Satisfied? Yeah. Go ahead, roll. All right, watch me closely, gentlemen. It's the old army game. I have nothing up my sleeves to deceive you. I've had my turn. Now it's yours. Where is it, Sid? It's your bet. What do you think it is? I didn't notice, did you? It's under there. Oh, is it? Pick it up and let's see. You pick up the other two. <laughs> you got the Barney? Oh, look here, Barney. That ain't the way to play this game, and you'll know it. It's the way I'm going to play it. Turn over the other two. 
Keep your hands on. You win. There's a little souvenir for you, Sid. Thank you. <laughs> you coming with me? Sure. <laughs> Like I got more than my share. Meaning me? Yeah. <laughs> What's your name? Morgan. Lot of Morgan. Hello, oh, uh, My name's. I Barney. know. You're Barney Glasgow. Well, there's yours, Lana. Thanks. Come on, Lana. Let's go to work. Stay right here. I'll be with you in a minute. Want me to get your money back? I'll give you a hundred if you do. <laughs> you like working, boys? Sure. Come on, shorty. They get two hundred. All right, give me something to put in this drink. They like that song you sing, Ari Lee. Well, how long have you been in this place? You know, first time I hear that Two song. First Where do you time... come from? 
Milwaukee. First time I hear that song. Are you folks still alive? I feel, yeah. so, I feel so bad. Did you ever hear from them? <laughs> I Once forget, in a while. I forget, I forget. How long since you left home? <laughs> what? Yeah, how long ago did you leave home? Uh, so you guys are all alike. Uh, you buy a girl a drink and you want to know the story of her whole life. Anyway, girl, pick my pocket for twenty dollar by George. <laughs> Barney! Barney! What? We're gonna get something to eat. Well, all right, go ahead. Aren't you coming with us? Oh, 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 oh. We come over later. Yeah, Leif, you take the boys over. Get them something to eat. Order plenty of chicken. Yeah. We'll be right over. <laughs> ah, we'll wait for you. <laughs> now, let's see. Where were we? Oh, yeah. Now, look. Can you give me any good reason why you can't go home? Are you gonna that start that? That's a good idea, Lot. Say, what are you, a couple of missionaries? I'm getting sick now, of... Now, wait a minute. You keep quiet and listen. I'm not nosy. I'm on the level about this. Why can't you go home to your folks? Because I... Well, if you must know, there's just 165 reasons why I can't go home. And all of them are dollars. Railroad fare, huh? Ain't that enough? You think that kind of money grows on trees? <laughs> Mine did. Now, look. Here's enough for your railroad fare and some to tide you over until you get yourself a decent job. They get a few dollars, too. What's the catch? No catch. I like you. I like you, too, Lot. You don't belong here, that's all. Oh, I'll take it. It's all velvet. Hey, you may look all right in the naked eye, but you... You better stop drinking. And you better take care of his money for him. Too proud to take it in. Will you get out of here? Why? Because... Look here, Barney, your pocket's full of money. Sid Lemaire's sitting over there, and if you think he's gonna let you get away with it, you're crazy. Don't worry about Sid Lemaire. Now go on, Barney. Please, do what I tell you. Will you go with us? No, thanks. I'll stay right here where I belong. All right. Then I stay, too. Me, too. Skull. Skull! Hey! Why you do that? Now will you get out of here? Sure. <laughs> and you're getting out with us. Come on. No, it's not. Look out, Barney. Uh-oh. All right, go get him, boys. You get him coming up the other end. You put him on the table and he's in the room. Who do you think I am? I think you're all right. I'd object like the devil if you didn't. Now, to prove to you that I do know something about women's clothes, look what I got to. Is that what all those measurements were for?
did you, did you ever try wearing your hair without those thingamajigs? In public? Uh, let's see, which is the front of the... Oh, let me see. Oh, Barney, it's elegant. It's the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. It's the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. Come on in, Swan. <laughs> come on, get down out of there. If I ain't you come for supper, I've ate half hour. We're coming right away. Wait a minute, Swan. I got a new dress. I got to put it on. Yeah, I've ate uh, two half hours now, huh? You didn't waste your time while you were waiting, did you? Oh, Pawnee, I forget. The telegram just come for you. This thing feel good, huh? There's nothing like it. <laughs> we have good fun for four days. Just like old times. Yeah, <laughs> better. We ain't have latte in old times. Yeah, it's funny how that kid gets under your skin. Yeah, just like sun when she come up over big pines on snow. Ask her, cool them off. You know, Barney? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the sun come up over the pines. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right, Barney. Rock is fine good. Uh, they don't make him any better. She come crazy for you, too. Oh, no. Yeah, you crazy for her. I know that when I see you look at each other. Ask her, give him another one. No, ask No, no. <laughs> <laughs> Why you do that? <laughs> the heat's gone to your head. <laughs> no, Barney. I see what my eyes see. What you do about that other girl? Huh? What other girl? That girl you was going to marry, the old man's daughter. Oh, I'm still going to marry you, Swan. Well, what about Lata? Well, I... Oscar, help me get out of here. Well, Barney, I come ready to You don't understand, Swan. I've got to do it. It's being you, it's partner. That's what I've been working all my life for. Well, why don't you say something? They ain't say nothing. You know already what they got to say. Sure, maybe you're right. Lotter is... Well, I didn't think it was going this far. You break her heart, Fanny. Oh, she'll get over it. Tell her... Tell her if she ever needs anything to let me know. She can have anything she wants. You think she'd take it? Hey, what you say? Me tell her? Hey, ain't you going to see her before you go? I haven't got time. No, that isn't it. I couldn't see her soon. If I did, I might not go. You gotta tell her for me. What they going to say? Tell her the truth. But Fanny, Fanny, I can't. I'm sorry, Swan. So long. Goodbye, bye. Marnie? No, it's me. Just a minute. Come on, Swan. Hey, Lata. Well? Lata, hey. Oh, do you like it? But I like that. Holy smokes, and it took me two hours to do it. To do what? My hair, stupid. I fixed it without the thing that you... Yeah, I like that. It looked nice. You think Bonnie will like it? Yeah, I think Bonnie... Lotta, 
ain't get to tell you something. What? Lotte, Lotte ain't feel good. What's the matter, son? I ain't got to tell you. Oh. oh, that's too bad. You want a drink? Yeah, you bet you have a drink. Probably need it. Do you drink too, huh? Sure, I will. Feel any better? Yeah, a little. Swell. Now, where'd you leave Barney? Oh, I, I, leave, I, leave, I leave Barney down the street. I think I have another. What were you going to tell me? I was going to tell you, I was going to tell you about, about Barney. You know, Barney's, Barney's funny fella. <laughs> he ain't say much. <laughs> I know that. You know, he ain't like other fellas. Someday he's going to be big man. That's all he think about. Sure, he's different. Yeah. I knew that the minute I met him. Yeah? It's like getting a bang on the nose. Yeah. For a while, I didn't know what happened to me. What happened? Plenty. You, you, you love him a lot? Well, what do you think? I think, I, I think, I think I have another drink. <laughs> hey, you better leave some of that for Barney. He ain't have to, he ain't coming back. What did you say? That's what I try so hard to tell you, and that you slip out. I didn't hear you, Swan. What did you say? Lotta. Barney. He ain't coming back. I don't believe you. You're lying. No, he ain't lying. He gone on train already. He said to tell you. He's going to marry Earl Hewitt's daughter. I'm not known. That's what you get for getting soft. I might have seen it coming. Oh, no. I gotta get kicked in the face before I get the idea. Sure, he's different. Men are swell, ain't they? They don't care if they... Mr. Detail. You know all these people. Yeah. yeah. Good dog, good dog, good dog. Hey, go get no, Lotta. No, 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 no. Come, Lotta. Everything ready. Minister, yes, come. Swan, you're a fool to marry me. Why do you want to do it? Because I love you. And I'll never make as good a wife as you deserve. Oh, Lotta. I hope I deserve you. You're the kindest man I ever knew. Gracias. 
go upstairs and tell Mr. Glasgow his breakfast is cold. Oh, I'll keep it hot for him, Mr. Glasgow. Do as I tell you. Yes, You've been sending him that message every morning for 90 odd years, Mother. Never hurried him yet, has it? I may have. You better be careful how you muss up that paper. You know how it upsets your father to find it not fresh. I told you a dozen times you might just as well use his toothbrush. I don't see the slightest connection. It doesn't seem to occur to the richest man in Wisconsin that we could afford two morning papers. Well, that would be silly extravagance. And the reason Mr. Glasgow's the richest man in Wisconsin is because he and my father before him knew how to take care of their money. Mother, why do you always call father Mr. Glasgow? I don't see why not. My mother never called my father anything but Mr. Hewitt to his dying day. Never? Never. Oh, good morning, Miss Ellie. Good morning, Tom. Is father in there? He's just finishing dressing, miss. I want you to pack a couple of bags for him. Something for fishing. You know what to put in. Yes, miss. Thomas, what did you do with that thing? Good morning. Oh, good morning, Evie. And how are you this morning? Oh, so, so. So, aren't you getting old enough to have breakfast in bed? None of your guff, Barney. I like my breakfast hot and plenty of it, just like you do. Oh, is that so? Well, you better not let your mother hear you call me Barney. What have you got there? A letter from Swan. Well, go ahead and read it. I think I know what he's going to say. Dear Barney, Hunting season just open. Why ain't you come up and be shoot deer just like old times? I hope you and family are feel good. I feel so good myself, I think I'd beat you shopping down tree if you was here. Just like I always do, by George. Ha ha. Is that true? Well, I never like to hurt his feeling. Nice of you. Anyways, eh? Anyway, I wish you come see me. You and Lotta was two people I like most in the whole world. And I lonesome to see you. Your friend, Swan Bostrom. You haven't seen Swan since he was down here on business that time. You and Mother were away when his wife died. It's been over 20 years since you've been up in Iron Ridge. Why, Bonnie? You see, Evie. Why don't you go, Bonnie? You could shoot a bear up there instead of acting like one down here. Am I doing that, Evie? You need a change, darling. When you got back, your mind would be in a lot better shape, and so would your figure. <laughs> All right, I'll go. Good. <laughs> you better behave yourself, or I'll get in touch. <laughs> I will. Oh, Thomas, Thomas! I feel better already. Yes, Mr. Glasgow. Uh, Thomas, pack a few things for me, will you? Something that I can use to... Go fishing, sir? Yes. Come on, Scott, get out of here. Go on. Hey, you didn't say anything about my new suit. I like it. Sort of hides the fact that you like to eat. Oh, well, why don't you stop picking on me? Oh, that mother of set looks just like one of your old ones. Oh, not this one. Bet you $2 she doesn't. I'll take it. All right, you're on. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Menard. It's a nice day, isn't it? Your breakfast is... I know. Ruin. How are you, son? Fine, thank you, Father. Any chicken livers this morning, Gutsy? Oh, Mrs. didn't tell me. I don't think there's any left, and the chicken for the party tonight. <laughs> well, never mind. Don't worry about it. You seem in a very cheerful mood this morning, Bernard. Would you like to see the paper, Father? No, not now. Anything interesting? Yeah, Teddy's swinging the big stick again. What? Mm, look at that. Mrs. Roosevelt. It's a wonder he wouldn't attend to his own business, running the government instead of sticking his nose in other people's affairs. Something has to be done with the country and the state it's in. Well, what do you expect with a lot of radicals in Washington? It won't be long before they'll be passing a law taxing us on the money we earn. Here, here. If you know so much more about it than Roosevelt, why don't you go up there and run it for him? That's not the point. Now they got some newfangled idea about forestry conservation. Save the forest from the vandals, vandals, vandals. Do they mean you, Father? Of course they mean me. What in blazes do they know about it? There's taxes eating us out of house and home on cut over land that wouldn't grow a tree again in a hundred years. Well, if you'd replant it after you cut it. Keep your mouth shut, young man. 
I heard all about that uh, replanting speech you made to the Young Businessmen's Club. What? Is that one of your new suits? Huh? Oh, yeah. Do you like it? Looks just like one of the old ones. Ah, Chapman's having a sale of down comforters. I have a good mind to go down to Milwaukee this week with Evie. If it weren't for all the parties. Oh, um, Emmy Louise, I think you'll have to count me out for a while. I, I've got to go to Iron Ridge. Iron Ridge? What for? Mm, in business, I had a letter from Swan. But Bernard, you can't. Tonight's Evie's dinner party for Orby and his family, the first since they've been engaged. Yes, I know, but... Well, what will Orby and his family think? Well, frankly, I don't give a hoot what they think. I've seen about all I could stand of Mr. Orville Bremer and his family. That goes for me, too. Personally, I think he's kind of a stuffed shirt. I'm sorry, Evie. <laughs> I'm going down to the office. Did you hear what he said? Maybe he's right. Well, that's a nice way to talk. If I felt that way, I wouldn't get engaged in the first place, much less married. That's an idea. No, look here, Evie. You don't have to marry that fat can lard or anybody else if you don't want to. Fact is, I'd rather you didn't. I don't care how old his family is or how much money they've got. Oh, Orvie's all right. He's a good kid. Well, are you going to marry Orville Bremer, or are you not? Yes. <laughs> well, thank you very much. I suppose it's very amusing to... That clock is three minutes slow. I hope, Bernard, you change your mind about going north. But I suppose I ought to know by now I can never expect any help from my family. The Reverend Paley said to me only yesterday, he took one look at my face and he said, Mrs. Glasgow, if ever I saw a woman who was a martyr to her family, that woman is you. Well, I've got to get to the office before I go north, I mean. Goodbye. Goodbye. I'll go to the door with you. Come on. <laughs> Good morning, Mr. Glasgow. Good morning, Josie. The report on that new breaching process coming in. The what? The breaching process. The report on the new bleaching process, did it come in yet? No, we're expecting it tomorrow. Well, it should have been here today. Find out why it isn't here. Yes, sir. And Josie, make a reservation on the five o'clock train. Be sure it's a drawing room. We're in Iron Ridge for a few days. Thank heaven. What'd you say? Nothing. What do you want? Well, if I can hang on to it, I think I've got something here. One of the boys, Tony Schwerke, and I have been experimenting. You know, what is it? A paper drinking cup. A what? Yes, a paper cup. To be used in public places. You drink out of it and throw it away. That's the best part of it. It's sanitary. Sanitary, my eye. People have been drinking out of glasses and cups for a thousand years. Well, I'll admit a thousand years is a long time. Don't waste you... my time with a thing like that. Well, Father, you heard what I said, address. didn't you? Yes, sir. Let's go. Thank you, Tom. There's a cigar boy. Thank you. Have a nice vacation, Mr. Yes, I will. Come in. Come in. Oh, what's the matter? Don't you know me? Barney! Yup uh, and yiminy! Go ahead, jump, jump! I guess I get them too old to you. Swan. Barney. I'm glad to see you. I'm glad to see you. <laughs> How you been? You look just like always. Yeah, I feel all right. <laughs> you get my letter, huh? Sure, sure. That's why, that's why I'm here. We'll do some shooting like the old days, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Barney, I get bad news. What's the matter? The camp she burned down two nights ago. How did that happen? Oh, that fool cookie, he start fire, then say she ought to get there. When he get back, camp is big blaze, but he put it out. Well, where am I gonna stay? Stay right there with me. 
Oh, doggone it, I wanted to do some shooting. All right, I'll go back on number 11 tonight. You stay here, you get the just the same. Do that, it's too far to go, morning and night. Maybe you ain't get back here in another 10 years. Sure I will. <laughs> I'm coming back soon. <laughs> Say, Swan, it's a nice place you got here. Yeah. Comfortable, cozy. Say, <laughs> what is this? Why, ain't you remember that night at Alcazar? When we do such good job on them hoodlums? You mean this is one of the trades? Yeah. My <laughs> <laughs> golly, we have fun that night. <laughs> you and me and luck. <laughs> She put that there. She talked many times about that night before she died. She, she talked many times about you, too, Bonnie. She always say, someday, Bonnie come back and see us. But you, you never come. Well, you know, this one. Yeah, I guess you're a pretty busy fella. And have you been happy? Yeah, you bet I'm happy. A lot to make fine, right? She learned to cook just like she did. <laughs> and you, Bonnie? Well, I got what I started for. You're happy? Happy? Oh, I suppose so. Family. Oh, they're fine. Say, I wish you could see my daughter. I don't know what I'd do without her. She's a great girl. <laughs> I bet you she is for spotted like you. <laughs> I get fine with daughter, too. <laughs> Why not with a father like you? <laughs> Where is she? Oh, she's at the hotel. Bonnie, I forget to ask you. You have breakfast yet? No, not yet. Thank you, we go see her and have breakfast, too. Huh? All right. I get on my shoes. <laughs> Smells good, huh? <laughs> Carrie gets us good breakfast. Carrie? Who's Carrie? Oh, that's my sister's girl. She lived with me. She had waiters here. Oh. That's her. Carrie! Carrie! Woo! <laughs> Carrie! All right, Swan. What do you think? Bonnie Glasgow, come up to see us. Well, ain't that nice, Mr. Glasgow. I'm sure glad to meet you. I'm glad to see you, too. <laughs> Uncle Swan's told us so many things about you. Every time I make ad supper, he says, oh, you used to like it. Ad supper? No. I haven't had any in years. I'll fix you some for tonight, for dinner at Uncle Swan's. Uh, no, thanks. I'm going back on number 11. Oh. I wish you ain't go, Bonnie. Now for your breakfast. What would you like to have? Some fruit and coffee? And some oatmeal. Some oatmeal. And we have some very fine pork sausages. You got any chicken livers out there? Sure, we've got chicken livers. I'll put the order in myself and I'll see that you get enough. She's a nice girl. Uh, you bet you she is. Where's your daughter? That her? You take care of that table. Papa. This is my daughter, Lotta. Lotta? Yeah, her name Lotta, too. This is Bonnie Glasgow. How do you do, Mr. Glasgow? How do you do? Uh, fire stand up, Bonnie. Sit down, sit down. Ain't he just like what I say? Yes, he is. Father's told me so much about you. He's always Here talking. we are, Mr. Glasgow. Here's your food. Lotta, run along. Coffee and the toast. We're glad to have you here, Mr. Glasgow. And your chicken liver will be ready in just the moment. She pretty bonny. Just like a ma. For a moment I thought it was. She's smart too. She's good going to school three nights a week. Study hard. She always say, I ain't want to work here always. Someday I get better you It's fine, Swan, that's fine. So you don't like it here? Hmm? Oh, heavens no. I want to go to Milwaukee somewhere and learn something. I don't want to be stuck here all my life like Pa and Carrie. Oh, Lotta. We hear that all the time, Mr. Glasgow. Did you enjoy your breakfast? Yes, thanks very much. Why, that smells nice. Do you like perfume? Mm-hmm. Well, I'll see that you get some. <laughs> 
I almost sounded like some of the drummers that hang out around here. Eh? <laughs> a little. Only you don't mean it the way they do. Say, Barney, what you say we go fishing? I know where trouts is biting good up near camp, too. Say, that's a great idea. Yeah? And when we come back, we have Swedish dinner, huh, Jerry? But Mr. Glasgow won't stay for dinner. Who said I wouldn't stay? Of course I'm going to stay. Oh, Lotta and I are going to fix some real Swedish food. Erzapa and smurgersburg. Yeah, and old dolma. And plum and cream. Yeah, and potato pancake. Mm. coming. Say, did you get everything ready for supper tonight? Mm -hmm. All we have to do is put it on the stove. All right, I'll leave early and you come along as soon as you can. No, I'll come later. Later? Why? I don't want to be there when Mr. Glasgow comes. Well, why, for Pete's sakes? Well, if I'm not there and he waits a while and gets afraid I'm not coming and... Him, and then I come. Well, what are you... What are you driving at, anyway? He likes me. What are you up to, young lady? Now stop grinning and answer me or I'll slap you, big as you are. Oh, you and Pa have been dumb all your lives. Well, thank you, Miss Marty. Well, you have. You don't plan or anything. You just let things happen to you. Well, I'm not going to be like that. I got ideas of how I want things to be, and I'm going to fix them so I can get them, that's all. Well, where does Mr. Glasgow come into that? He likes me, and he can do a lot for me if I just make him think I'm worth helping. I'm Swan Bostrom's daughter, and... I got looks. I'm going to amount to something. You wait and see. Mr. Glasgow thinks I'm too good for this place, and so does Pa, and so do you. And so do I. Mmm, doesn't it look good? Yeah, bad golly, say so hungry, I think he eat the whole horse. You two go ahead and eat. Mr. Glasgow must be hungry. Yeah, sit down there, Barney. No, no, wait a minute. Isn't Lotta coming? Oh, she'll be here. Uncle Swan, pour the snacks. Yeah. Lot to be here pretty quick. She maybe have to work a little late on account of them fishermen's at hotel. The smurgus boy is the best I could do, Mr. Glasgow. I hope you like it. Mm. That looked nice, Carrie. Skull? Skull. You don't suppose she isn't coming, do you? Carrie, <laughs> mm, Carrie, down your Sunday throat, huh? Yeah. yeah. I better get the rest of the supper. You know, Swan, I, I've been thinking of that girl of yours and what she said this morning. God, Barney sure always talked that way. Well, maybe she's right. She's a, a beautiful girl. <laughs> she's prettiest girl in Anne Ridge. Oh, no. Uh, she ain't well, I mean it that way. I don't mean just pretty. Did you see the way those men looked at her this morning in the dining room? Barney Lotter's good girl. Of course she is. That's why I want to see her get the right start to get somewhere. So she... What's the matter? You back her? A little bit. What's happened, Uncle Small? Oh, you think what I have two years ago. Oh, he's all right. He's as strong as a woods ox. You were very strong. I wonder what's keeping life. Oh, she'll be here any minute. Hmm? I think I'd better get her. Oh, but no, no, really, Mr. Glasgow. She's just a little late. I mean, on account of all yes, those people Yes, I know, but maybe she can't get off. Oh, but That's... no, she's just I a little... I think I'd better get her it's because I know Brooke Schneider. Oh, Oh, hello. Oh, I've never been here. It seemed like they wouldn't stop eating. <laughs> oh, let me help you. We didn't think you were coming. I ran all the way like to fell down a couple of times. Oh, that's too bad. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> oh, but the very idea. She should be waiting on you instead of you on her. Oh, no, Cap give me the... Here, here, wait a minute. I'll, I'll put it on. Now, Carrie, go away. <laughs> well, the supper's on the table. Come on, it's getting cold. Oh, look, it's like a party. I hope you come to Anridge often, Mr. Glasgow. I'll come regularly if you and Carrie invite me to a supper like this. Sit down, Barney, sit down. Here, help yourself, Mr. Glasgow. Oh, Thank please. you. There. I'm so hungry, I think I eat two horses. Uncle Swan. I'll take that. You get the flowers. Oh, Lava. Uh, can you sing? Yes, a little. Well, you sit down and sing something for us, will you? 
all right. Play something, Pa. Yeah. Bonnie, you know that one, uh, Bertha Nelly's hat, huh? Uh, you sing that just like you used to sing when you were shanty boy. Go on, Mr. Glasgow. Uncle Swan always used to tell us how grand you sung. Please, Mr. Glasgow. What will he give me if I do? <laughs> will he give me a kiss? Oh, I have... Sure thing she will. You sing Bird and Nelly's hat and lot to give you a kiss and Kelly give you a kiss in Bay Yards. You ain't look out the old swan, give you a kiss too. <laughs> All right, we'll all sing it. <laughs> Go ahead, swan. Be your little honey, I was only shed. To Nelly, as you know, the dreamy eye. It's a shame to take the money, shake the bird and Nelly's hat. Last night she sang the same thing on the eyes. And to Nelly, well, you win the methods only kiss. I bet that you was never kissed like that. When you don't know Nelly like I do, say the sauce she lit the bird on Nelly's hat. And I'll leave you in. That's it. By golly, you ain't forget how to kiss girl, huh? Carry you next. Oh, no, no. Hey, there, hey, there. Oh. What's happened, Uncle Swan? Uh, nothing. What's I just get tricking back, that's all. Yeah, I don't like this. I think you ought to see a doctor. Uh, I'll take you to Chicago to see the best doctor in the country. I ain't want to see now, no Now, shut doctor. up, will you? I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll all go to Chicago. Swan can see a doctor and we'll have a holiday. See some good shows and have a good time. What do you say? We have fun. Yeah. No, no, but Mr. Glasgow, not and I have got our jobs. And think of the expense. Oh, that's my business. But what do folks say you taking us? Well, Carrie, if I can't take my old friend and his niece and his daughter on a holiday, things have come to a pretty pass. Oh, but he's right. We're going. Fine, then it's settled. Come on, Nellie's hat. We'll all sing it again, huh? I'll keep your presents on the old old time sing. Said Nellie as she rolled her dreamy eyes. She is fixed in wood and plenty, said the bird on Nellie's hat. Oh, Willie, Willie, when will you be wise? When an hour of all the diamond engagement ring, across the valley you'll return in their tent. When you don't know Nelly like I do, shh. Hey, George, I get to get that fixed. <laughs> Yes, yes, and go right in, Mrs. Glasgow has been waiting for you. Come in, come in. Hello. Well, we are dressed up, aren't we? How do we look? How do you like my hat? Oh, it's fine. <laughs> you know that owl, he hurt and hurt and keep me awake two or three nights. Then you he ain't hurt now. Oh, Uncle Swan, you shouldn't have told that. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Well, never mind, I like it. And I like it too, Carrie. Oh, oh, there we go. <laughs> Won't you sit down and make yourself comfortable? Hey, Barney, uh, what, what's this place? It's a private car. I had it set up to take us to Chicago. Oh, just like it. Of course not. <laughs> Would you like to have something to eat now? Yes. It's so big. Tell the steward I want to want some dinner. I haven't served him here. Oh, yeah. I beg your pardon. Oh, you were going to say something there, what was it? I thought we were going to eat in the dining room. I've never served I've never been in one, but I've watched them go by with people sitting at the windows eating. And I thought how grand I'd feel if I were there, too. Yes, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's a snowflake. Uh, never mind about the steward. Uh, we'll eat in the dining car. Oh, but I... No, it's perfectly all right. We're here to have a lot of fun, and you can have anything that you want. <laughs> uh, do you want to eat now? Yeah. All right, come and get it. <laughs> yeah, come and get it. Glasgow. It's nice to have you with us again. Thank you, Glenn. I saved you a nice table. That's fine. 
Hi, Barney. Well, hello, Charlie. Good morning. Uh, sit down. I'll be with you in a minute. What are you doing up in this neck of the woods? Been up fishing at Twin Forks. Any luck? Only fair. What are you doing up here? Oh, I'm on my way to Chicago. This is Swan Bostrom and his folks. Uh, he and I used to be loggers together. He hurt his back, and I'm taking him to see a specialist. Nothing matter with a girl, though, is there? Why, she... Don't be silly. I'm old enough to be a father. <laughs> That's what I always tell her. Yeah. <laughs> you old fool cat. Come into my car. We'll have a little brandy after dinner. <laughs> I've eaten too much. I've got to take off my coat. I think have to sit down again. <laughs> Will you smoke a cigar, Swan? Thanks. Well, you had dinner in a diner. <laughs> Did you enjoy it? No. No, I didn't. Not to. You didn't? Well, what was wrong? Well, look at us. Why didn't you tell us we looked so funny? You didn't look funny. Oh, yes, we did. I saw those other women laughing at us. They were laughing at this and Carrie's owl. Well, nobody laughed at my owl. They did so, Carrie, only they were polite enough to try to hide it. You knew it before you took us in there, Mr. Glasgow. Why didn't you tell us? Listen, Lotta, perhaps your clothes aren't what they ought to be, but Well, I... they're all right, and I'm rich. Yes, I'm rich. That's why I wanted to... I guess I belong there. I'll never be able to fit in with people like that. Oh, yes, you will. For the simple reason that you realize something is wrong. Don't worry what other women will think, because wherever you go, Lotta, they'll all wish they were like you. And as far as the clothes are concerned, well, we can take care of that in Chicago, can't oh, we? Mr. Glasgow. <laughs> It's certainly different from the dining room in Iron Ridge. My course, it's killing me, but I feel like a queen. And look like it. Oh. <laughs> and you love it. Most beautiful. Well, you can't very well say that they laughed at you this time. No, they didn't, did they? And are you happy? Oh, you've no idea. I'll never be able to thank you enough. It's more than I even dreamed about it. It's so lovely, it's like... Well, I'm so happy, I'm afraid you think about going back. Well, don't think about Iron Ridge. Because you're not going back. But oh, fine. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. I don't want any arguments until you hear what I've figured out. I'm going to take you all back to Beautiful with me. We can. Oh, yes, you can. Now, you want to go to school and learn something, don't you? Oh, yes. Well, you're going to have that chance. A lot more, too. And Swan can have a job in the mill. Yeah, hey, not no job at the mill. Of course you do. I need a man like you in the wood room. Half of them down there don't know the difference between a hemlock and a red oak. I've got a nice cottage on the peninsula, and you can live there. Now, it's up to you, sir. Well, Danny, I'll try it for a while. You don't have to stay there if you don't like it. <laughs> and we could have a drink together once in a long, long while. Thank you, I All right, that's settled. <laughs> now we were talking about a good time. Good. Let's begin now. <laughs> Good, good. You look better on stick to a carry's hat, huh? Yeah. Ain't a good place for you, too. Glasgow's doing for Pa. Where'd those roses come from? Mr. Glasgow sent them. 
to you and me. Not a... You don't suppose he... You don't think that? What? It's just got to be your pa that Mr. Glasgow is doing all this for. Of course. I've sometimes wondered if... It sometimes worried me that it might be you. Gary, are you trying... I know it's awful, but he is interested in you. Maybe more than he ought to be. Well, how can you say such a thing? You know Mr. Glasgow's interested in me on account of Pa. I wonder if he is. Of course he is. How can you say such a thing? How can you even think it? You'll spoil everything. Well, I can't spoil anything unless it's true. Now, listen, love. No, I won't listen. I won't listen to anything. Because you're afraid to. Well, you're just as scared as I am that it's true. No, I'm not. I'm not. Mr. Glasgow? Yeah. He sent me to fetch you and your family to the mill. Yeah, I go get Carrie and Lotta. Uh, you come in the house? No. I'll keep an eye on this newfangled contraption here. It's liable to blow up. Yeah. And I don't care if it does. You ain't like horseless carriage? I hate the pesky stink wagons. I've seen ornery horses in my time, but none as infuriating as this infernal machine. What we do if she blow up with us today? We worry about that after. If we need to. Hi, Josie. <laughs> you know, it wouldn't be natural if I didn't trip over that thing. <laughs> What's on your mind, Josie? Here's a report on your bleaching process. All right, all right. You know, I never felt so much like working. You certainly look better since you got back. Younger or something. Well, that North Country does you a lot of good. Fishing makes a new man of you. Fishing? You look as though you just shot a lion. Josie. Yes, sir? Have a telephone installed in the cottage for the Bostroms. Have it done right away. And send a box to... Oh, that's all, Josie. This letter you wrote to McLennan. What about it? Well, you can't do that. Why not? The government won't let you. I cut my timber, fix my rates, and ship my logs as I see fit. I always have and always will. Now, Josie, yes, let sir. me know as soon as those people get here. Yes, sir. Don't you realize the times have changed? I don't want to argue about it. I'm busy. Expecting the Bostroms? Yes. They say that daughter of Swans is a Pippin, is she? Oh, I don't know. Just a big Swede. Nice kid, though. They're here, Mr. Glasgow. Well, bring them in, bring them in. Or do I have to go after myself? Will you please come in? Hello, Hello Swan. Swan. How are you? Hello, Swan. Good to meet you. Hello, Carrie. Yeah, yeah, I've seen you a long time. <laughs> Glad to see you. <laughs> Glad to see you, too, Swan. Thank you, Ellie. She grew up to be big fella. How are you today? Yes. Right. And do you like Butamore and business college? Oh, everything's perfect, Mr. Glasgow. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> of course, we knew you're doing all this for Uncle Swan. Huh? But we'll never be able to thank you enough. Nonsense! I'm doing it for Lava and for you and Swan, for all of you. Well, you certainly made us all very happy, Mr. Glasgow. And aren't you happy, Karen? Oh, so happy. I haven't dared pinch myself since we left Iron Ridge. <laughs> that was the general idea. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is my son, Richard. Uh, Miss Carrie Lindbeck. How do you do, Miss Lindbeck? How do you do, Mr. Richard? Oh, please, do call me Carrie. Everybody does. Of course I will. Carrie, uh, this is Lotta Bostrom. Hello. Uh, Hello. Come along, girls, and I'll show oh, you through the like mill. Uh, we... Father, yes. before you go, Van and I have been having a little disagreement. Well? Uh, the girls have been ripping the safety catches off the cutters again. Well, what of it? Well, Van won't do anything about it, and they'll have the How many times have I told you that whatever Van says goes? Well, I don't want to hear any more about it. Come along, girls. And Swan, I'll show you what we do to a tree after you chop it down. Bye. Bye. I want you to see that wood rope. That's going to start Monday morning. Okay. Pretty, isn't she? Is she? Say, if you felt the building shaking just then, that was me falling for. Somebody else must have fallen, too. You ought to see the bills for clothes from Chicago. Thank you. 
Good evening, Mr. Glasgow. Good evening. Won't you come in? Pa and Carrie just went out for a walk, and I'm making... And you're waiting for my father. Well, he's not coming. He's at home where he ought to be. Now, look here, Miss Bostrom. I've come to tell you you've got to stop making a fool out of my father. Everybody in town's talking about it. What is it you want of him? Money? That's money you... How dare you talk like that to me? What do you mean by saying those things? Well, that's true. Keep still. Who told now, you? Now, you wait a minute. Now, look here, Miss Bostrom. Don't you hit me again. If I'm wrong about you, all you have to do is say so. Well... I'll believe you. I'm sorry, but you are wrong, Mr. Glasgow. You've got no right to... Oh, that's nothing. It's burning. What's you burning? You don't understand. It's just my candy. You mustn't believe everything well, that... Well, don't you think that you... All right. I'll fix it, but... Don't you go away. You stay here. Gee, it smells good. Here, I'll fix that. You fixed it. You fixed everything. Gee, I'm sorry, Miss Bostrom. It was darn clumsy of me. What's the matter? Did you burn your hand? No. Well, you, you've got tears in your eyes. Because everything's spoiled. Well, it's only sugar and water. That, that's nothing to cry about. That's not what I'm crying about. I never should have come to Butamore in the first place. Well, all right, but we've got to do something about cleaning up this mess. Oh. Look where you're going. Don't walk around. You get it all over the kitchen. I've made a mess of everything. Oh. It's sticky. Well, of course it is. It's that kind of candy. Well, I don't... Well, why don't you stop crying and do something? The art of paper making goes as far back as the ancient Chinese. They were the first ones to discover that paper could be made from the fibrous matter reduced to pulp. Oh, really? I never knew that the Chinese had... Oh, yes. The ancient Chinese were one of the most inventive and cultured races the world has ever known. Oh, I'd love to go to China, wouldn't you? Yes, I would. Wouldn't it be fun to ride in the rickshaws and eat with chopsticks? And see the temples and the Great Wall. Just imagine the Taj Mahal in the moonlight. That would be wonderful. Of course, the, the Taj Mahal isn't in China, but that wouldn't make any difference. Oh, don't stop pulling. It gets just like flypaper. Go on and tell me more about paper making. Well, the Arabs learned it from the Chinese, and the Crusaders, who visited Byzantium and Syria and Palestine, uh, learned it from the Arabs. And uh, then, well, it came on down to us. Oh, Mr. Glasgow, isn't history wonderful? It never seems so darn wonderful before. We shouldn't have stopped pulling this. No. Look out. You take that. Oh, this is awful. <laughs> Juan Bostrom's outside, wants to see you. Says it's important. Well, he ought to know. Shall I have him come in? Of course, have him come in. Come in, Spence. Hey, Fanny. <laughs> you look great. <laughs> What's on your mind? You come to talk about my job? Oh, what's the matter with it? Oh, it's fine job, Fanny, and it ain't no work to it. I sit all day like loafer and just look at wood. Fella say, what that? I say, that hemlock. You say, what that? I say, that pine, ain't you know? He say, sure, they know, but you're here to tell me. <laughs> that ain't good job for all timber wolves. <laughs> all right, Swan. I'll see that your loafing stops if that's what you want. Oh, hello, Swan. Hello, Richard. You get candy out of here, huh? Yeah, most of it. I'm afraid we made an awful mess of your kitchen. Oh, that's all right. Lotta clean up kitchen fine. Hey, Richard and Lotta made candy last night. Too bad you ain't come over. We have a nice time. Yeah, I had a meeting, Swan. I'll see that your loafing stops. Yeah, you know, active cuss, Barney. Yeah, sure. Yeah, thank you. Bye. Goodbye, Swan. Dan says that Eastern crowd is going to open offices in Chicago if the panic dies down. How do you happen to go there? Go where? To Lotta's, Bostrom's house. Well, I, I just went down there to invite them to the employee's party. 
Do you personally invite all the employees to their annual party? Oh, but I... Now, look here, young man. You've got other things to do besides going around with the Millhand's daughter. I want it stopped. Well, you go down there. Well, that's different. I'll go down there to see my old friend Swan. A pig's eye you do. Take a letter. Wait a minute. This will interest you. Somebody took a mighty pretty young lady out to luncheon this noon. Mr. Russell A. Eubank, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. My dear Russ, as you will recall, I've been considering opening a New York office, as the time seems right for many reasons. I propose to put you in charge and place under you as your assistant my son Richard, who is familiar with... I all won't go. Who is familiar with? Never mind the leather. Oh, uh, Mrs. Glasgow telephoned that she'd pick you up at five o'clock. All right. Oh. Well, I talked to you about something, Barney. Go ahead. Serious, do you mind? No. Oh, I see how you do it. What is it you want to talk to me about? I've broken my engagement with Orville Bremer. You what? Yep, this afternoon. It's all over, and oh, I feel so much better. So you finally did it. I was hoping Where that... Where are you, Bonnie? Oh, I didn't like him anyway. He might have helped me out a little when Mother was talking me into it. Oh, I know. What made you change your mind? Several reasons. Tony, in particular. Tony? Tony who? Tony Schwerke. Tony Schwerke, 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 Darling, don't Schwerke, keep repeating huh? like that. You look so dumb. The only Schwerkes I know are the bohunks that live down the flats. Tony's one of those bohunks. What? He's in charge of the room where the big tubs are over at the mill. He's been working for you since he was 14. Well, what does he look like? Oh, he's tall and thin. Where'd you meet him? At the mill or where? No, in the mud out in the state road. I was stuck, and Tony came along and got under the car. All I could see was his legs sticking out. I had to laugh. He looked so funny and dumb and sweet, like a bug that had got turned upside down. Now, oh, Evie, you can't fool around with a boy like that. You can't do it. Break your mother's heart. No, I won't. There won't be anything left to break when you get through. What are you talking about? I think you know, Bonnie. Have you been listening to no. a lot of them? I didn't have to listen to anyone. Oh, I don't blame you, not really. I don't know enough about it. I don't want to know. But I do know you've been unhappy. Bonnie, if I don't marry Tony, I'll be unhappy like that, too. If I let Mother talk me into marrying Orvi, I'd be unfaithful to him. Evie! I would. I know I would if Tony wanted me to. Evie, you can't talk that way. Why not, if I think it? When you love someone like that, there isn't anything you wouldn't do. Not anything. Please, Bonnie, don't ask me to give him up. Not even for Mother. All my life I've done what she's wanted me to, but I can't anymore. Please, Bonnie, help me. You're the only one who can. You can have a million bohunks if you want. I only want one. Well, you're going to have them. Come back here! Come back here! 
Are you in love with my daughter? Sure I am. Well, you didn't get so mad about it. How are you? I'm glad to see you. Let's go up to the office and talk it over. I'd like to. Come along. Look out for that. <laughs> you smoke a cigar? No, thanks. Uh, cigarettes, I suppose. Sometimes. Hmm. Uh, this paper cup of yours looks as if it had possibilities. Maybe we can do I'm something. I'm sure it has, Mr. Glasgow. Richard thinks so, too. He and I are partners in it. Oh. Sit down. Uh, send Richard in. Yes, sir. Do you want to marry my daughter? No. Why not? I couldn't keep her. Is that your only reason? Of course it is. Well, you mean to snap my head off. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to do that, Mr. Glasgow. Oh, come in, Richard. Hello, Swerky. Hello. You better get your patents out on this uh, paper cup as fast as you can. Yes, sir. How many do you think you can turn out in a day? With this machine, we've planned several hundred grows. Uh -huh. All right. I'll tell the superintendent to give you a free hand. Uh, Swerky. You and your family are coming over to the party tomorrow night, aren't you? Yes, sir. Now, that's fine. I want Mrs. Glasgow to meet you. Oh, thanks. Uh, be careful of that. Yes. According to the census reports of two years ago, the capital invested in lumber operations in the United States was $90,564,862. Uh, the number of employees was 146,000, 596. Uh, their wages made a total of 66 million. Uh, 86 billion, 944,000 lumber. Now, well, that, that just goes to show you the condition this country's in. Yeah, that's right, Richard. Yes, of course that's right. Why, if my grandfather Hewitt had replanted 50 years ago, the old money grabber, and my father had replanted 25 years ago, there'd be something up there for my children to cut. That is, if I ever have any children. Well... you hire a hall and get a soapbox in the park. Did Richard have you strapped in your chair giving you a lecture? Oh, he talks wonderful, Mr. Glasgow. He's awfully interesting. I don't know how I got on the platform. I'm sorry if I bored you. You don't have to listen to him because he's the boss's son. He goes on that way all the time, like a Negro preacher. He'll talk an arm off of you if you let him. Yeah, that's right. Just a regular windbag. Should have stopped me. Well, good night. Good night. Good night, Richard. Hey, go to the gate with you, Richard. Come again, won't you? Oh, thank you. Have you got any of those coffee crunches, Carrie? Oh, sure. I've made some this morning. If there are any left. Well, somebody looks mighty happy tonight. Oh, yes. Sir. I passed my examinations at school today. Oh, did you? You are a smart girl. Yeah, they told me I'd be ready to take a job in about three months. Uh, uh, Lada, how would you like to go to Chicago to work? I'd hate it in Chicago. Carrie wouldn't like it either, I, I don't think. I wasn't thinking of them. I mean, you. Alone? Oh, I'd be lonesome. I'd be scared to be in Chicago alone. Well, I'd be there. I mean, I'd come down often on business trips, and we could go to the theater together and have dinner. You'd like that, wouldn't you? Well, yes, but you... You being a married man and all, people think it was funny. People wouldn't know. I 
guess you don't think much of me if you think... Lotta, I... darling, Lotta, I love you. Oh, no, you don't, Mr. Glasgow. Don't talk like that. You think just because I'm a young girl and... Do you think that I'm old, Lotta? Because I'm not, I'm not. I love you and I'll do anything in the world oh, for you. please don't. You must You must have known how I felt about you the moment I first saw you. No. I thought it was on account of my father. Well, anyway, I did it first. It was you, Lotta. You're what I've missed all my life. I need you. I've got to have you. I made a mistake once, but now it's going to be different. Lotta, you and I... Oh, don't, Mr. Glasgow. You mustn't say these things. It's wrong. You mean because I'm married? I'll fix that. I'll get a divorce if you'll only wait. Say that you will. I'll take you away from here. I'll make you happy. I'll do anything that I... I'll see you tomorrow night at the annual party. We'll talk about it then. Well, I'm glad we didn't eat them all up. Thank you. They're the best I've ever made. This is Mrs. Glasgow, Mr. Mrs. Schwerke. How do you do? Well, thank you, Mrs. Glasgow. I'm glad to see you. Glad to see you, Mrs. Glasgow. You know Richard, of course. Oh, yes. And this is Tony Schwerke. Yes, I guessed as much. You've got a paper cup and my daughter wants to marry you. I don't want to marry him just because he has a paper cup, Mother. <laughs> have you had anything to drink yet, Mr. Schwerke? No, honey. Well, you have something. Here, George, come here a minute. Come over here, Schwerke. Have something yourself. You know, the more I think about that paper cup of yours, the better I like it. Hello, Richard. Oh, hello. Uh, the family's waiting up there. Oh, yeah. Mark Free Silver. Hey, Brian. Hello, Swan. How are you? Well, this is wonderful. Uh, where's Lotta? Did you bring her? Oh, yeah. She just went over there with Richard. Oh. Hey, George, party this nice party. Uh, yes. Uh, will you excuse me a minute and uh, get yourself a drink, won't you?
Now, you were so late coming. I was about to go after you. I almost didn't come. Why? Well, I'm not an employee of the mill. Oh, I know, but Carrie and Swan are. Thank you. Richard, Pa and Carrie and I are going back to Iron Ridge. You don't like it here? Oh, we love it, but I... But what? Well, I... It wasn't because of anything I said the other night, was it? No. Because I was an awful sap. Yes. Yes. You know, I'm kind of glad it happened, though. Why? Well, because it made you so mad that you had to take notice of me. I noticed you before that. Did you? And what's all this guff about going back to Iron Ridge? I've got to go. Well, why? Well, because I... Because why? Because Pa, pa misses the woods. He, he's used to an outdoor life and mm -hmm. hunting and fishing and... Mm -hmm. Well, you're not going. You don't belong up there. I don't know where I belong. Well, I'll tell you. You belong with me. I'm going to New York to live and you're coming with me. We'll crash New York together, just a couple of rubes from the Middle West. Mr. and Mrs. Richard Glasgow have taken an apartment at the Waldorf. Can I help you, Mr. Glasgow? No, thank you. fight because I'm going to lick the everlasting daylights out of you. Father, you crazy. You out of your mind? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I'm in love with Lotta and she's in love with me. We're going to be married and there's nothing you can do about Hello, it. Hello, Stan. Don't, Richard, don't! Don't! He's your father. He's an old man. Get out of here. Both of you. Come on, Lana. Even you can't have everything you want. Damn. You look better now. 
The tables are all ready, but they won't sit down. See if you can get them to come in and eat. Oh, fool. 